Hey, what's up, my construction entrepreneurs? Tyrone Jones here with the Construction Entrepreneur School of Services. Hey, so um, I, I want to do a quick video about um, basically insurance. And I don't, I don't think I'm going to cover everything with insurance, but I want to talk a little bit about uh, workers' comp. Uh, someone left me a comment. Let's see who it is. Let's see here. Uh, looks like J Voltage left me a job voltage. J A V job voltage left me a comment saying that uh, what insurance company did you use for general liability and workers comp? <laughs> so um, with me, uh, been at this for a long time, so I've been using the same. Um, I recently purchased a company, another concrete company that's been using the same insurance company for years. So I went with that that new company, insurance company, because there's a relationship there. Um, but right now I'm with Alliant. Um, let's see if I can get to I'm with Alliant. That's A L L I A N T. And they're just a broker, okay? And Alliance, Alliant <clears throat> is their job for me as a, as a company is to search the carriers, the insurance carriers for the best rate for my company. So they are the broker because we cannot go directly to the insurance company, right? So with Alliant, I go through, they carry my commercial auto, my uh, workers' comp, my property insurance for my office, and my property insurance for my uh, yard. And um, there's a $50,000 uh, 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 dollar amount put away for all my equipment that's not listed as heavy equipment on my equipment schedule list. So I give them an equipment schedule list, uh, basically to have all my larger equipment items and they cover that. And then they set aside another 50,000 for all my other equipment, which equals up to a thousand dollars per equipment if any loss, damage, theft happens uh, with that equipment that's not listed on that equipment schedule. So they cover uh, the, the property, I have a container on the, the yard, uh, they cover that. So they just cover everything um, as far as across the board. I only deal with them as a broker. Uh, maybe I might change, I'm not sure, but I, I go to them, they give me the best rate. And um, uh, at this time, it was a good, the timing of the question was pretty good because I just renewed my workers comp. Right. And we'll talk about this for a little bit. So I just renewed my workers comp, which uh, is, 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 is pretty high up there. So I uh, so basically when I look at my cost, my proposal that they sent me over that I just signed yesterday, uh, looks like the property, my property coverage was covers building and personal property. Uh, my premium. Uh, um, looks like last year property came up to, uh, looks like property 60, uh, 1600 building 400,000 property 93,000. Uh, so it looks like now I'm lower on that end Marine, which covers the inland Marine coverage, which covers uh, all my schedule equipment that I told you I'd give them a list of my Bobcats, uh, uh, my walk behind saws, my soft cut machines, uh, my demo concrete saw cutting machines, uh, my attachments for my skisters, my breakers, my auger bits, my auger motor, things like that is on the, the schedule equipment list. And then um, this have a lease, a lease and renting equipment. So when I go out and rent, I'm covered under that too as well as well. Um, and then my auto, my auto was uh, ten thousand seven hundred last year. Now it went down because I have less vehicles. It went down to thirty six hundred this year. 
So I went from 10 pieces of equipment. It's not even all vehicles. I had trailers on there. I had dope trailers on there under my auto. So now I got rid of a lot of those trashy trailers we wouldn't use and I lowered it down to only three. So I went from 10 to three, which went from 10,700 to now 3,600 for this year. Workers comp, looks like my workers comp, um, workers compensation was 16,200 for last year. Uh, and my estimated payroll was, uh, $722,000 and $722,000. Now, for my new workers comp, I'm paying $26,000 and they're estimating my payroll at uh, 1 million, okay? Uh, so basically my expiring premium for last year was 33,000. This is how much I have to pay them to initiate this policy is $33,148. Now, my new premium, which I have to pay since I signed this new agreement is $34,000 and $34,010. So it slightly went up about 900, 850 bucks or something like that. Okay, so it slightly went up um, um, for from that year from that year to this year. Now, one of the things you can do now, mind you, this is on a bigger scale. I am going to go back to when I was when I first started and how I got workers comp. I'm going to go back to that that portion of it too as well. But um, right now, let's say what I could have done here is I could have looked at my workers comp and says, hey, uh, that amount that you have me down for the one million, you can lower that. I'm not going to reach that. I'm going to reach 700,000. You can do that, but you have to realize that if you do get up to a million, right, or whatever, you, you're going to have to pay that difference, okay? Uh, uh, so it's all calculated based on the, uh, the, uh, the audit that they do um, uh, before they renew the policy, okay? So... Uh, that's how that works. So that's how much I'm paying. Now, when I first started out um, years ago, no one would even cover you for workers' comp. You only had to go through state fund. And I'm in California. So only had to go to state fund, uh, which is ran by the state to get workers' comp insurance because no insurance, it, it was, they were very little, one or two, maybe five. It was very hard to find a company that will cover you as a brand new contractor uh, years ago. Now that has changed, okay? Uh, you can still get insurance through the state as a new contractor, and you don't have to use a broker. You can actually go on to uh, the workers' compensation. This is for the state of California. Excuse me. You can literally go on... Um, Let me see here what it is. Um, you should be able to go on California uh, State Workers Compensation State Fund. Here it is. Yeah. So a state compensation insurance fund. So I just went to statefundca.com and you can literally request a quote from them. Uh, this should be here. Let me see here, let me make sure. Yeah, you should be able to, uh, you should be able to get a quote. You should be able to file for a quote on there and not have to go through a broker. And, uh, and then you'll create an online uh, portal. So once you get a quote, um, um, let's see. So, so how this went is, I needed workers comp. I was afraid to call around. I didn't know what to do. So I found out I can go through state fund. Uh, I called state fund and it was a nightmare. So I had to go online and file on the application online. And I do have uh, a video here, old video um, on my channel where I show how to file for a workers comp, general liability, 
auto, how to fill out the application, what to put and how to understand it. Because when you're going for a workers' compensation quote, they ask you how much you think your estimated payroll is going to be. And you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot in the beginning. And let's say you go with like, say, hey, I got a, I, they're, they're estimating me at a million dollars of payroll. You definitely don't want to do a million dollars of payroll because you're going to pay high for your premium to get that policy. You want to give them something like, I'm going to do 20000 for the first year, 10000 for one guy, 10000 for another guy. Okay. That's what you want to give them. You want to give them a low number. Now, mind you, once you get that cost, that cost is only for $20,000 uh, payroll amount. If you go over, you're going to get slapped in the face with a big bill. You're only giving them a lower amount because you're starting out and you may not know what you're going to be doing. So it's no sense paying for a larger policy because you want to do big work you're gonna to have to pay big money. You may not have those funds when you're starting out. So you wanna give them a lower number. So when they ask what your estimated payroll is gonna be, you wanna go as low as possible. 20 to, you wanna say 20,000 and you're gonna do two employees. They're each gonna work 10,000 part, part, part time because I'm just starting out and that's all I want. And then once you get that quote, uh, I, think it, I think at that time years ago, I think the quote, I had to pay 2,100. 21, 2,500 to start the policy. And then they did audits uh, or they asked me for online audits every three months. So I had to submit my payroll earnings three, every three months online. And then at the end of the at the end of that policy, they did an audit. So uh, you have to make sure you're up and up because the audit will request that they get your bank account. Uh, because what happens when they look at someone's when they look at your statements on your bank account, they can see who you're writing checks to. And if you're writing checks to individuals, they will question that and wonder why you're not covering those individuals under workers' comp because you should be writing checks to companies because you have a company. So there's no, you know, you can't write a check to uh, uh, one of the things we did in the field I did was I didn't know how to pay workers' comp and I didn't have workers' comp. So I will label employees as 1099. I will say, hey, you're just a 1099. Well, the way it works is black and white. Either you're a 1099 contractor or, you're, or you are an employee. So if that person is told that what time they need to start, given a lunch break, what time they need to stop, they can get overtime, that's, that's an employee. That's not a 1099. Right. So you got to be careful when you're dealing with that and make sure that it's right for your industry and that you can get away with that. OK, and that's very important. So I was in violation when I was doing that years ago, uh, labeling uh, 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 employees as 1099 contractors and they were not contractors, actually employees. Uh, so anyway, so got the quote, they issued the policy. Then you create an online portal. Mind you, this is with state fund. Create an online portal, and then you can file claims, get certificates from your online portal. If it's a company that's out of state dealing with state fund, you cannot get a certificate. Uh, you actually have to call state fund to get a certificate for any out-of-state companies that requires you to send in your uh, certificate of insurance or endorsements, right? And I talk about that on another video where you do endorsements for contractors or companies that you do work for. Uh, you endorse them to uh, release a liability from them, okay? Calls are starting to come in, so I'm gonna have to wrap this up soon. So uh, that's how I did uh, with my first workers' comp insurance. I went through state funding, got a quote, and kept it just that simple. Uh, years later, after I, after I gained some momentum, I went to a broker and, a, and I found out that the broker the next year went to state fund for my insurance. So the broker can also go to state fund for your insurance. Now, one, one of the years I remember me going for a, a workers' comp quote and I went through two different brokers. And one of the brokers was giving me a quote and I went to another broker and I said, hey, I'm looking for a quote. This, and that broker, the second broker came back to me and says, hey, three of the companies that I got a quote from already have given you a quote with this other broker. So they just gave me the same number. 
So what I found out is that there's a pool of insurers that uh, that these brokers go to, right? And they submit it to all these brokers to get a quote back. And sometimes when you go through different brokers looking at quotes, those insurance companies are are getting are giving the same quote for your company to different brokers. So um, so sometimes you you know outside of whatever network they're using to get quotes, sometimes there's a network and they submit it to a network and then it comes back uh, with 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 a uh, with a quote from them. Sometimes a broker is dealing with a different type of network of insurer of insurance companies, you know. But usually everyone is dealing or pulling from the same type of pile because they cover a certain industry in California. And California is a lot stricter than a lot of these other states, as you guys know. Um, and that's what happens. So, and then next thing you know is uh, commercial auto. So when you're doing contractor work and you're actually working for general contractors, you cannot use your personal insurance to cover your vehicle. Your personal insurance is for your personal insurance. Your commercial auto is for your business. So you have to get commercial auto for your business. Okay, so you can have two auto, two different type of auto insurances for the same vehicle. So when I first started out, I had a car, or I had a, a, a I think it was a, a, a SUV of some sort. I forget what it was, but I had like a little Bronco or um, one of those little sporty white cars. I forget what it is. It's on. I, I'm pretty sure it's on YouTube somewhere. Uh, and I used to load up the lumber uh, in the top of the uh, little little truck, which wasn't a rack. But anyway, so I had that vehicle. I had commercial insurance covered under that vehicle, and I had personal insurance covered under that vehicle. Know that if you're driving for work and you get into an accident and you only have personal insurance coverage, and they ask you, what were you doing? Where were you going? Uh, 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 you know, where were you headed? You're like, hey, I was working, going from one job, one house to the next house, then they're not going to cover you because you should have commercial auto insurance for that vehicle. So you got to be careful. So yes, you have to get two. You have to get commercial and personal. And that will be covered that. I'm going to let you go with that. Guys, I went long with this one. Hope there's a lot. Uh, I used to do uh, applications and show different type of forms and really you guys you guys get uh, um, uh, less interested in that so I'm just talking this through hopefully I'm explaining this right not jumping all over the place because uh, I think we all got ADHD especially as owners so uh, let me know if you have any other questions go ahead and leave it in the comment make sure you like follow subscribe uh, and uh, and share it, you know, and let me know if I need to elaborate on something, okay? Thanks. Hustle hard. Did hustle harder. My construction entrepreneurs catch you on the next one.